Hello and welcome to Dr. Brainwaves. I am Dr. Susan Rochelle and this is Dr. Rena Azar. And we thought today would be a good opportunity to clarify some terms specifically as it relates to cancer. Cancer, unfortunately, uses a lot of medical terms and mm -hmm. it can be um, frightening just to hear medical terms, especially if you don't know what they mean. So we thought that we would do, do just that is um, clarify some of those. Um, I myself am a breast cancer survivor. So I am very familiar with a lot of these terms and I have had many, many people call me about what does this mean? What is metastasis? What does this mean? The staging um, and uh, what is adjuvant therapy? There are several terms that people will ask me about. And so we thought, because so many people ask us these questions, we thought that it would be a great opportunity just to clarify some of those. Absolutely. So I like to open this talk with a discussion about the fact that cancer is a spectrum of change. Cancer is not an overnight change. It's a evolution of cells from a normal state to a cancerous state. And a basic principle is that cells in our body should know exactly who they are and what they should be doing. And when they become cancerous, they no longer know who they are and what they should be doing. And that is why they are able to go to other parts of the body and spread and grow and take over normal cells because they have forgotten their mission and they are on the loose and doing what they feel like doing. So the, the time period between a cell becoming, going from precancer or normal to cancer is very different depending on the cancer type, which is one of the many reasons why we can't cure cancer because it's, it has many, many different faces. So some cancers can develop when a cell starts changing into an actual cancer uh, in, in maybe a year. And other cancers can take several years to develop. There's a spectrum of change. We usually designate some kind of terminology depending on the type of cancer, uh, which is usually referred to as a grade, like a grade meaning how aggressive that is. In other words, how aggressive are those cells, both in their formation of cancer and in their spread once they become cancer. So aggressive type cancer cells will progress rapidly to become cancer and spread rapidly. Uh, and non-aggressive ones, less uh, less time, uh, I'm sorry, it takes more time for them to actually evolve through those stages. And sometimes the, um, gun, the uh, oncologists will refer to them as slow growing mm -hmm. cancers. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes they'll tell you, you don't have to worry about this because it's gonna take decades before it's problematic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and then some of course are more aggressive and they get treated more aggressively. So it's important to know that when your doctor talks to you about a precancer lesion versus a cancer lesion, you need to understand that precancer means that this, this area has been designated as not cancerous, not capable of spreading to other parts of the body. And that's important because what you see is what you get. So if you treat a precancer by removing it, it's gone. And you don't have to look at other parts of the body to see if it's gone there because it can't have spread. It doesn't have the ability to spread. Cancer by definition means a cell that is capable of spreading to other parts of the body. So it's important when you talk to your doctor to have them clarify, is this a precancer? Do we know it's a precancer or is this a cancer? And it's important to know that cancers spread through different routes. And they all vary in their preferential spread. So some cancers just like to grow. They get bigger and they grow locally. They just grow. Uh, and they push on things and they expand and they can cause damage that way. Other cancers get into the lymphatics. The lymphatics is a vascular system or a system of fluid flowing through the body. I think everybody can visualize easily the blood vessels that we have. Blood vessels are arteries and veins that carry oxygen and blood around the body. And that's another mode of spread for cancer. It gets into the bloodstream. But there's a whole new plumbing system around the body besides the vascular system that carries blood, and it's called the lymphatics. And the lymphatics carry mostly clear fluid from body areas all around the body. And the lymphatics have periodic lymph nodes, little stopping points where the, that, that uh, fluid gets 
filtrated or siphoned. And that's why cancer cells tend to get collected in lymph nodes. And the lymph nodes around the body are special points where we can look and see, hey, has that, has that lymphatic flow carried the cancer past this point? And that helps us direct our care to a patient, knowing that the cancer has been through that area or not. And lymph nodes are very helpful that way. You will definitely hear about lymph nodes if you have a cancer. And that's the other thing that uh, can't be overemphasized, and that is that the lymph nodes will also swell mm -hmm. um, just because the accumulation of the tissue that is in there because cells are recruited to those areas of lymph, the, lymph, so the lymph nodes. So if you have a very large lymph node that does not go away, so lymph nodes, they are part of the immune system, so they're going to get big and get small depending if a person has allergies, if a person has um, infection. Mm -hmm. But if your lymph nodes grow, 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 not getting any small, or, oh, that could be a warning sign. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be evaluated just for that reason because of possible lymphatic spread. And then there are some cancers like lymphoma and that's where they originate is from the lymph system. Mm -hmm. And that brings up another point. Here's another reason why we can't cure cancer because every cancer comes from a different cell type. And we have so many different cell types. Each cell in our body has a mission, is a, de a definite uh, a set of responsibilities to do certain things in our body. So they're all different types of cells and each one can give rise to cancer. Some cancers, we know a relationship between a causative factor. So we know that smoking can induce certain forms of lung cancer. Uh, we know that HPV virus can induce cancer in the cervix of the uterine uh, opening. And uh, for example, it's, we have so many cell types in our body that can give rise to cancer, it's almost innumerable. And we actually even discover new ones sometimes. So for example, the skin, the skin just looks like a little thin layer covering us. There are over seven different types of cells that can give rise to cancer in the skin. We know most of them, squamous cell, basal cell, and melanoma are the, the most frequent types, but there are several others. So you can imagine that's just the skin. Forget all the different organs and all the different tissues in our body that can all, each and every one of them give rise to a cancer. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, different cancers spread in different ways. Some preferentially grow locally, some spread to the blood system, some spread to the lymphatic system. And so they each have a different pattern of growth and spread. And speaking of that, we often refer to the term staging. So whereas grade is telling us about that cancer, grade is used for cancer, okay? Grade tells us how aggressive the cancer it is. And aggressive means how quickly does it grow and spread, growing or spreading to the blood or the lymphatics. That's a the grade. Word for spreading. And the word for spreading is staging. So if the... If you get a designation of a certain stage, that is telling us, you know, in a sense, how long have you had the cancer? In other words, how long have you had it based upon where it has gone in the body? Is it local or is it, uh, is it immediately local, right? Every bit of that cancer that you have is right there or has it gone to the lymph nodes or, or the bloodstream and potentially spread to other parts of the body, like the brain, like the lungs? like the liver. And if it spreads like that and starts to plant and grow in other parts of the body, that is called a metastatic lesion. Absolutely. So we'll look at distant as well as local. Right. And you may hear that there has been um, a distant spread or a metastatic spread. And so what they're referring to is the fact that it has moved into another region and has set up shop. And now those cells are dividing out of control in that particular area. Right. And just briefly to touch upon treatment for cancer, obviously we do sometimes surgery to actually remove the cancer, mm -hmm. right? And then sometimes we remove it surgically, sometimes we remove it with other treatments like burning it, ab ablating it, uh, which is uh, d dissolving it basically. Uh, we use chemotherapy to attack it. We use... Um, we use immunologically uh, directed. In other words, every cell has certain little proteins on its surface. And we actually now have cancer treatments that are directed at getting straight to that cell because it can identify that little protein on the surface and attack the cell more directly. And that's called targeted therapy. So mm -hmm. you may hear your oncologist say, we're going to do targeted therapy, and that's specifically what they're referring to. And the advantage to that is pretty clear. If you just 
slam your body with some chemotherapy, for example, you're damaging some other cells as well. Healthy Not, cells. Yes, in addition to the cancer cells. So targeted therapy has less side effects and is just overall healthy. But unfortunately, we don't have targeted therapy for every type of cancer. So, Another type of treatment is going to be radiation. Right. And in addition to those modes of initial treatment, when you're getting treated for cancer, the doctor's thinking, do I need to treat for more distal areas that I don't even know are there, but I strongly suspect are there? And that's why sometimes even if you have, for example, breast cancer and they choose to either surgically remove it or remove it with radiation, if they suspect it's gone elsewhere in the body, they may give you some chemotherapy to help dissolve small metastatic distally spread areas that they are trying to keep from surviving treatment so that it doesn't come up years later as a recurrence of your cancer. So that's an overview of cancer, and hopefully that'll be helpful for you in understanding terminology and the principles behind treating cancer, and also answer for you the question of why we can't cure cancer, because it's not just one thing. Thanks for visiting Dr. Brainwaves.